re-explore the whole question of Egypt and the whole question of the movement of the races and uh, how did that pyramid get there? You know, how did how did the civilization how did it actually get started and who who was the people who started it? And then we have all of the other lie mechanisms, of course, which you have to negotiate and plow through. There's a whole cult since the 1970s funded by the United Nations of the Afrocentrists who uh, tried to uh, convince the world, and have done a pretty good job doing that, uh -huh. of that, uh, you know, it was the Africans who um, created the Nile civilizations. And there's, not that, there's no real hard evidence for that, but yet that was picked up by the media and by the Smithsonian and the National Geographic and all of these other orgs, which are highly suspect, yeah. and they push this for all their work. And it doesn't, it's not sustainable. But Correct. at the same time, you're stuck with having to then rebut it. And these latest discoveries do rebut it. Uh, the, even the uh, discoveries of Sigmund Freud at the turn of the century rebutted it. But, you know, they don't care. They don't, the establishment doesn't care what facts are. They, they're going to hit you with whatever media spin that turns the whole of reality upside down. And, and uh, my job then starts to, in the 90s, start focusing on the, this level of disinformation and through deconstructing the disinformation, plowing through the welter of lies that have been disseminated about Egypt, about Ireland, about the age of catastrophe, and about so many other things in this life. What we commonly know and understand about Giza and Egypt and Egyptian civilization is, I hate to use the term, but it's essentially a lie. Uh, yeah. What, what other word would you use? It's just, it's a lie, and there are people promulgating this lie who know damn well that it's not true. But they've got money, they've got ego invested, uh, you know, it's a big tourism industry, and we don't want to slight uh, the, the, the black races of Africa, but unfortunately, the DNA is not to be argued with. He's not of African heritage. Uh, it, it's clear he's of European ancestry. And it's clear that this man is... is uh, is, is Northern European. Most people would think, well, we'll see another Barack Obama or something like that. No. And uh, Obama trying to claim ancient Egyptian heritage uh, uh, amuses me to no end. Uh, that what, I forget which pharaoh he claims to look exactly like, but uh, <laughs> it all gets to be out of hand. Yeah, he was uh, claiming to look like uh, Amenhotep IV, who's that's known right. as Akhenaten. That's uh, Considered to be, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Tutankhamun's father. So uh, you know that could change, but the consensus is that uh, Akhenaten was Tutankhamun's father, and Nefertiti was the mother of Tutankhamun. There's mm -hmm. other scholars, of course, have different takes on this, but that is the general idea until new evidence comes forth to change that. And my, and Nefertiti is a very important character because she has been the one, in fact, of that particular dynasty, that particular family, that many scholars through the hundreds of years have suspected was of Western ancestry. So uh, to find out now through the, the most you know, up-to-date science, DNA science, that in fact her son is directly, non-negotiably, of Western ancestry right. is a huge uh, vindication not only from my work, because I am, I am probably the only scholar who has said that, because other scholars have tacitly admitted that there's a, some sort of connection between the East and the West. Right. But they, they, not a single other scholar that I know of, apart from the Commons Beaumont of the turn of, of the 1960s, and uh, Connor McDowell and Anna Wilkes, the people that my books are dedicated to, other than them, and perhaps the American Ignatius Donnelly have ever suggested that the actual uh, kings of Sumeria, Babylon, and uh, Syria, Assyria, and Egypt, and so on and so forth, including many of the characters mentioned in the Bible, by the way, actually came from the West. It, this has been stated, but all of those scholars are completely suppressed. My work is to carry on their legacy. Mm -hmm. And so... And so um, but I must add again that it, the, the Nefertiti thing has always been a question mark, not only because of her facial features, but because 
she, her ancestry has been completely um, removed. All the books that are official say, oh, nothing's known about her, her family line isn't known. In other words, there's been a very big cover-up to yeah. make sure that nobody can track her back at all, apart Who's... from herself. And, and, and that I believe that, that I smelled a rat with that, because yeah. that seemed to me that there was an obvious campaign to make sure that her ancestry would not be known. And so then now to find out, uh, I repeat again, that now that the, the, the science, the genetic science shows that her son was of U European ancestry, it is now a no-brainer that mm -hmm. the six other daughters and the mother and potentially even the father, that's Akhenaten, were of the same Western uh, descent or heritage. Yes. We did get right to the point where you were making it quite clear that the sisters and the husband were probably also of Western European extraction, and that's clear. Um, there is, uh, again, an awful lot. If you just do a simple search for King Tut in any search engine and look for images, uh, you will find pictures of him, and there's, uh, there's just no question about it. I mean, the man is, is not of uh, African DNA descent. Let's not take anything away from the African cultures, and you know, they've made their contributions. But ancient Egypt uh, is a construct of people who have scrubbed the historical records and made damn sure that we don't have access, and thanks to Michael we do now, uh, to the concepts that are, that are crucial in understanding what really went on in ancient Egypt with those pyramids. Uh, so wh who is behind the confiscation, as it were, of the data and literature that pointed to Western European or Gaelic heritage, in, uh, at least in terms of, of that particular dynastic family? Oh, it's, uh, that particular family's history has been skewed beyond all recognition. The main perpetrators uh, are the British Crown and, and also their uh, cousins in Germany. The Bavarian mm -hmm. government, the Bavarian mm -hmm. royals, anyone who's had any kind of um, occupation, and this probably even goes for Napoleon and his gang, but much less them than the British government, who even worked through the uh, Islamic, because remember, everyone knows or should know, it's a general uh, known fact that the desecration that took place to the actual temples and statuary of Egypt was right. done by the Arabs, the later Arabs, who, you know, who, who, who didn't want this pagan, uh, didn't want these pagan civilizations to be known and went around and defaced and so on and so forth. But I think the true story there is, again, that these people were often uh, funded to do this. There's, there was a campaign. This is picked up in the book uh, by Gre uh, Gerald O'Farrell called The Tutankhamun Deception, which is a very important book. Um, Sounds like a great but read. Certainly the British I, government. Yeah, that sounds like a good book. Yes, it is. And the, the Vatican is also involved because, of course, who was it who colonized Ireland and made sure that the original pagan indigenous culture there was suppressed beyond all control? Originally, it was the Merovingian dynasty, the Templars of, of Burgundy and France, uh, who came over, and they're known in the Irish context as the Chaldeans. These are early Christian monks. Uh -huh. But their history I've gone into is very interesting. They were responsible for suppressing the Druidic culture. Uh, as I was saying just before the break, the Irish annals and legends speak about the daughter of Akhenaten. Uh, Lorraine Evans, in a book called The Kingdom of the Ark, is a very top-level archaeologist who specializes in digging up uh, Egyptian relics in England, in Britain. Her book is full of examples of this. Uh, Egyptian beads, Egyptian talks, bracelets, jewelry, even bolts have been discovered. Um, then you have the great scholar L.A. Waddell, uh, again, of the turn of the century, 19th century, highly suppressed author, uh, a genius linguist. He was a contemporary of Schielman, the man who discovered Troy. These men were contemporaries. They were some of the first scholars mm -hmm. in history to even see, let mm -hmm. alone decode and interpret Sumerian script. So great giants of the, of the world that have been completely forgotten because of what they discovered. And while it L.A. Waddell, one of his greatest discoveries, which is pertinent to what we're talking about, was that he, he discovered the grave of the first king of the first dynasty of Egypt is in Northern Ireland. King Menes is buried in Northern Ireland. What's he doing there? Why did he go there? 
the gods Ra, the god Osiris, uh -huh. uh, the god Horus, all are later descendants of Nordic and British or Irish, if you're using the pure sense. I don't just mean Ireland when I say Ireland. I mean the Druids, the Arya, the sure. high Arya who had colleges throughout the world. Well, those colleges, as the Irish annals and the ancient legends of Ireland confirm, mm -hmm. were all over the world, right down into Egypt. But the legends have always been taken for legends, and the myths mm. have always been taken for myths. Why? Because those are talismanic words. You, you put the word legend on something and people dismiss it. This is much more in deep than just finding cocaine in, in, the, in, in the tombs of the mummies or pictures of elephants in South America and parrot feathers in Egypt and all of this other stuff that's come up anecdotally over the years. This mm -hmm. is absolute vindication for those people who said, no, it's not just that these people visited or being thrown out, like you asked earlier, moved westward in a vain attempt to find a new home. No, this shows that their origin originally, not visitation, but their ancestry came from the West in a mm -hmm. direct west to east uh, movement. Mm -hmm. That is, blows the whole thing wide open. I'm glad mm -hmm. you put the pictures up, mm -hmm. because uh, remember, Zahi Hawass adamantly refused to release this information when it came out. It's not official. This was leaked by people on the team mm -hmm. and from behind the scenes silently. Mm -hmm. the, the head men adamantly said, "We are." They are it's in the report. I have it. It says, I will not release it. They were so frightened of what this means for the Afrocentrists and all of the other bogus stuff that's come out from the universities and what the... People will realize when they find that this right, there's no right, merit right. in it. So there's That's a complete a... clamp down. Yeah, Those I got it. that you're putting up in the article is completely leaked. Wow. What does that tell you? Yeah, it tells me time. And uh, don't forget that there's an entire tie-in here to the Bible through what is known as the Hyksos people, who have been this uh, group of kings, a dynasty in Egypt that has always had a question mark over it. Uh, as to who they were, and more importantly, where they came from. And the great scholar Ralph Ellis has proven, he was not the first one, there's been many at the turn of the century, like Sigmund Freud and others, who showed that there was a connection between the Hyksos dynasty and the Israelites, the people put before us in the Bible as the Judites and Israelites. People go back to you and I, our previous uh, interview on this, we talked about that. And right. so there's a biblical tie-in as well. Now, the interesting thing that just put the cap on the idea of the Afrocentrists I have to say this, as I say, we're not bashing African people, but we are trying to be as factual as we can be. If they were, in fact, the originators of the scintillating empire and civilization of the Nile, how come in Africa they never have then duplicated it and built another civilization or even a quarter of it or a third of it to show that Africans could have built a civilization you know, comparable to the Nile? If that hasn't happened, how dare the Smithsonian and other groups come and tell us that it was people out there that made it. It's a completely hideous travesty of the truth. But they will literally pull out any, you know, chimera to hand you because right. they'll do anything to cover up the connections between the East and the West and the true story of these migrations and, the, and what the old Irish annals that I read uh, mention. They will do anything that, to have you go and read them. Our history as we are taught it, as it is brought down... Uh generation through generation here in the West is, is I, I guess it's still being tweaked and, and corrupted, uh, you know, every 20, 30 years or even more often than that. A sentence here, an in, inflection there in the printed text, so to speak, and you've got a different view. I mean, that, that you're, it must be amazing to go back and do what you do to find out what really happened. It must be also very discouraging at times. Well, see, I've had my own little solar celebration because this information came out, uh, you know, the summer solstice, or the, you know, the July. So I had my own little 4th of July raise a glass to the sun. Thank <laughs> you.